We're talking Jack Gibbons. We're talking why the Big Ten West is continuously disrespected. And then we're talking departures from the Minnesota Gophers hockey program. That's coming up on Locked On Golden Gophers. Locked On Golden Gophers, your daily podcast on the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Golden Gophers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name's Kane Robb, host of the podcast, former collegiate football video coordinator and recruiting assistant, now here with you with the Locked On Golden Gophers podcast. Be sure to check us out on YouTube. Please subscribe to the podcast. The button is right there. Just go down and press subscribe real quick. And then check us out wherever you get your podcasts, wherever you prefer to find them. Find it at Locked On Golden Gophers, and that's where you can find us, wherever podcasts are streaming. Now, this Monday, we will be announcing a winner for this right here, a free Golden Gophers mini helmet. It's got Goldie. It's got the M. It's got a tail splitting down the middle. It's the best helmet that the Gophers wear, in my opinion in their new uniform scheme. Again, you can find out how to win this for free over at our Locked On Golden Gophers Twitter page. There's only about 20 people qualified right now. It might even be like 15 to 20 people. So if you want a shot at that free helmet, just go over to Twitter. It's super easy. You just retweet a tweet, follow the Twitter account, and subscribe on YouTube. That's it. And you get entered into a drawing to win that free helmet. So go check that out. But we're going to do what we're supposed to be here to do, and that is talk Minnesota Golden Gophers. So first off, we're going to talk Jack Gibbons and why he is likely going to see potentially his name called during the NFL draft. Now, day one has passed. That was last night. Unfortunately, we did not have any Gophers go in the first round of the draft. Unfortunately, Boye Mafe did not make the cut but I am sure that he will show up early in day two. I also believe Fa Alele will see his name called in day two, and Blaze Andrews could as well. Now, one player I think that might get his name called on day three is Jack Gibbons. Now, let's talk about Jack Gibbons. His RAS score, which we've talked about before, is relative athletic score. His score was a 7.4 out of 10. Not terrible, not extremely lighting the world on fire, but solid. And that sounds about what you could say to sum up Jack Gibbons' career in college football is solid. Now, Jack Gibbons, like I said, at a 7.4 score, his composite size grade was great. He had a 9.2 for his height and then a 7.77 for his weight. Now, the thing is that his bench score, he got a 1 for RAS because he only did 14 reps. It's a little concerning in the strength department, but overall he's a very consistent player. He had good explosion across the board, okay speed across the board. He ran a 48240, which only gave him about a 3.66 overall in his speed score, but in his splits he saw a 5.05 and an 8.06. His first 10 second split or 10 meter split was actually the 8.06. So he's quick out the gate, which you love to see. And then lastly, his agility was a great score as well. So the agility plus that 10 split really shows you he has the burst, he has that quick out the gate momentum, which you could really use as the linebacker, especially when trying to fill the hole and stop the run. Now, let's talk about Jack Gibbons a little bit as a player. He played at Abilene Christian University for a majority of his college career, came to the Gophers for his final year, which was last year, started in all 13 games last season, and he led the Gophers in tackling. He had 92 tackles last season with 56 solo tackles, three PBUs, and one forced fumble. So he did it all. He started on the linebacker unit, 
He was extremely productive, led the team in tackles, and that's something that teams take note of. It's not going to necessarily get you first, second, third round draft pick, but it's going to get you some attention because teams love consistency. And the linebacker position on the defense is probably the easiest position to plug and play. You know, DBs, toughest position to plug and play. Safeties, you need a lot high athleticism and good production. And then D-line and pass rush, you need all sorts of different things. But the linebacker, if you can show quality production and consistency, it's easier to plug and play. Unless you get a top-notch linebacker, you don't see linebackers going too early. In fact, I believe in that first round that we just saw in the draft last night, I believe there were two or three linebackers taken in the first round. Two or three. But you'll see handfuls of linebackers going in the fourth, fifth, sixth, and even seventh round because those are guys you can plug and play. I mean, let's take a look at past Gophers. I mean, we have Carter Coughlin. He was drafted in the seventh round. Blake Cashman was drafted in the fifth round. Devondre, Devondre Campbell was drafted in the fourth round. Damian Wilson also drafted in the fourth round. Kamal Martin drafted in the fifth round. I mean, right there, I just named six linebacker golfers, all drafted between four through seven. And a lot of them have seen good production. Carter Coughlin has seen good production in his first couple of years, had some injuries that slowed him in. Blake Cashman came out hot, had lot high tackle numbers, injuries. Devon J. Campbell. I cannot say his name without slightly stuttering, and I apologize for that. But Devondre Campbell, all pro, great get for the Packers. Also did great work for the Arizona Cardinals when he was with them. Fourth round pick. Damian Wilson, rock solid, has played for the Jaguars, has played for the Chiefs, has played for the Cowboys, and given them solid production. Fourth round pick. And then you got Kamal Martin, who played for the Packers and is now on the Panthers. I mean, teams are still taking these guys, and they're still using them because they're consistent, they're productive, and they get the job done. High tackle number guys. And I think that Jack Gibbons is going to do that exact same, take that exact same type of route, follow that same path that Gophers have led the way with. Um, his by looking at his RAS scores and looking at his measurables, his closest comp is actually none other than former Viking linebacker Chad Greenway. And that's not a bad get at all. I honestly think that Jack Gibbons has a shot to be drafted somewhere between the fifth and seventh rounds. I think he will be drafted. I do, honestly, sincerely. If he's not drafted, I might have to reevaluate how I see these guys and when they enter the draft. But I do believe Jack Gibbons has a chance to be drafted between rounds five through seven. And I'm anticipating it. You should too. So that's going to do it for our Jack Gibbons talk. That is our final player profile. Now, we will talk about these Gophers next week, where they went in the draft, or where they signed as undrafted free agents. We're going to dive into that early on in the week next week. Next, we're going to talk about why is the Big Ten so disrespected? And when we're talking Big Ten, I'm talking Big Ten West. People give the East credit, but why is the Big Ten West so discredited? We're talking about that next. First, I want to talk about our friends over at Built Bar. See, Built Bar is the protein bar that is actually good for you. You can replace your candy bars with a Built Bar. Candy bars typically have 300 calories, like 30 grams of sugar, and a whole bunch of net carbs. It's just not doing anything good for your body. It's actually probably doing more harm than it is good. But Built Bar is only 130 calories with only 4 net carbs, 4 grams of sugar, and 17 grams of protein. It's perfect for after a workout. It's perfect for a quick snack to fill you up so you're not munching all day. And it tastes delicious. See, that's the thing that they hone in on at Built Bar is that they make sure that the taste is what is phenomenal 
and then they figure out how to make it good for you. I don't know how they do it, but they do. And my favorite is the mint brownie. There's all sorts of wild flavors, including white chocolate chip, and it's just, it's great. But they even have Puffs, which is their chocolate-covered marshmallow bar. I mean, all sorts of flavors, taste phenomenal, and it's good for you. I don't know how else to let you know why you should try Built Bar. So if you're interested, you definitely should go over to Built.com and use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order. Again, go to Built.com and use code LOCKED15, one, five, for 15% off your order at Built.com. All right, so we're going to talk about the Big Ten West and why it's so disrespected. I have just a vast amount of notes on this topic, but I'm going to keep it condensed for you. I don't want to overwhelm. I don't want to go too far off the deep end and lose you, have people turning off and whatnot. So just prep yourselves because this is important. I mean, why are media analysts that are highly recognized not giving us credit? So here's what I've come up with. One, it's because Ohio State, they alone make up for a majority of the top level success from the entire Big Ten Conference, and they make up for a lot of the consistency as well. So Ohio State being in the other conference automatically already gives them a foot up, which is ridiculous, but I can see the point slightly. But it doesn't mean you should discount what the other teams in the Big Ten are doing. Now, reason number two is history. People are still giving programs like Penn State, Michigan, Indiana, more credit than they may be due, at least in recent times. I mean, outside of last year, Michigan has been middling. Indiana has been in that same boat and sometimes worse as well. Yet the namesake of those schools is carrying more status. Now, is that fair? Is that right? Probably not. But it happens, and you see it happen very often, not just in the Big Ten, but heavily in the Big Ten, especially with programs like Indiana and Michigan. Yes, I know. I know. Michigan made the playoffs last year. You know, a broken clock is right two times a day. Now, no offense to Michigan, but we'll see if they can keep that consistency heading into the next season. So the final reason that I think that really pops out is players drafted. Now, if you look across the past five years of NFL drafts from 2016 to 2021, Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State make up 48% of the players drafted from the Big Ten. So of the 205 players drafted in the Big Ten, 48% of that was those three schools, Ohio State, Michigan, and Penn State. And that is a high, high, high reason why people consider the East so much greater. They might not blatantly state that, but that is what is impacting heavily, if you ask me, because they're consistently seeing these guys turn out at the NFL level and they forget what happened with those guys on the field in the collegiate days. They don't remember, oh, that guy was really good, but he played on a team that was six and seven. They remember, oh, Saquon Barkley is amazing, and he's from Penn State. Chris Godwin is great in the NFL, and he's from Penn State. That's what they remember. They don't remember what those college teams even did. So that's what's lingering in the back of some of these media analysts' heads. Is it understandable? Slightly, but that doesn't define the programs. It doesn't define the school and the football team based on solely their NFL caliber players. It definitely contributes and it helps, but programs can find success outside of just developing professionals. So I feel like the Big Ten West definitely doesn't get enough rep because of those three factors. But if you look at even records just from across the last three years, I took every Big Ten school 
in their record over the last three years. And what it looks like is Ohio State is clearly at the top. But then the top five is three Big Ten West schools. You have Ohio State, then you have Iowa, then you have Michigan and Minnesota, who finished with the exact same record of 23 and 10, and Wisconsin closely behind them at 23 and 11. Now, Ohio State had a way more wins than the rest of the schools. I believe they were 31 and 4. But then Iowa was 26 and 8, and then you had Michigan and Minnesota at 23 and 10. So, of those top five, as I said, three were Big Ten West schools. Now the next three were Big Ten East, and then the three to follow were Big Ten West, and then you have a jumble of just the bottom of the barrel in the Big Ten, which we don't need to refer to. But if anything, it's more equal across the entire division of the Big Ten, both divisions, across the entire conference, I should say. It's a lot more equal. I mean, Ohio State is clearly the cream of the crop in the division, in the conference right now, but Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin are holding their own, especially with Michigan. They're right there. I mean, Penn State and Michigan State are closely behind. Uh, If I recall correctly, Michigan State had 20 wins and 13 losses, and Penn State had 22 wins and 13 losses. So they had three more losses over the last three years than Minnesota or Michigan, but they're right in that vicinity with wins. So I just, I don't get the hate. I don't get the bashing, but then I I took it a step further and I was like, okay, let's look at the top schools in other power five conferences, the leading programs. How do they compare with our big 10 West and looking at our leading programs? So Iowa, Wisconsin, in Minnesota. Now, I'm not looking at the SEC because we all know how obnoxious those fans and the media members of the SEC get about them being the best conference and they're the best talent. And we're just not, I'm not trying to hear their mouths. I'm not trying to deal with all that. So we're going to look at all the other conferences because no matter what you say to an SEC fan, they goes in one ear, out the other. It's just not worth our time. Okay. You and me both know this. We both know this. We've heard enough of the annoying SEC fans. Respect to those who aren't those annoying SEC fans. But let's look at the other conferences. So in the ACC, I looked at teams like Wake Forest, Pitt, UNC, Clemson, and Miami. Now, Clemson fit right in there with that same category as Ohio State, but Wake, Pitt, UNC and Miami, they were either at a similar level or lower than all three of our Big Ten West top schools. Then you look at schools in the Pac-12, Oregon, Washington State, Utah, UCLA, USC. Again, the only one that's standing above, and it's not even in the same tier as Ohio State and Clemson, like I had mentioned, Oregon is the top of those, and they're actually the exact same record over the past three years as Iowa. Exact same. And when you take a head-to-head matchup of Oregon and Wisconsin in the Rose Bowl in this past three years, it was a one-point game. We're right there with them. We don't get enough credit, and it's absolutely disrespectful. I mean, looking at the win percentages over the last three years, Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin hold up with some of the best teams across divisions, even in the Big 12. So Oregon, Utah, Baylor, Oklahoma State, those are in the same winning percentages and tiers as Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. Yet Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota are better than UCLA, Texas, USC, Pitt, North Carolina, Miami, Wake Forest, and many more. So why the disrespect? Sure, we'll be underrated. We'll take the hate. But at least know what you're talking about out there, analysts and others that like to bash on the Big Ten West because there's nothing to bash, especially in the top tier of that division. So next time, do your research before hating on the Big Ten West. Now, let's get away from football. To end the show, we're going to talk about the hockey departures from the Golden Gophers this week. That's coming up next. 
first, I want to talk to you about our friends over at Bet Online because you can check out all the trends in action. All your sports betting and sports wagering information can be found at Bet Online. You want to check out who has the best odds for the Heisman Trophy? You think it's Bryce Young, the previous winner of last year's? He's the second best. The best odds for the Heisman Trophy this upcoming season is C.J. Stroud of Ohio State. See, you can find those numbers and more all at Bet Online. You can even still check out betting numbers for the NFL Draft over tonight and tomorrow. You can check out NBA Playoff Series. You have the Celtics and the Bucks coming up. I'm going to guess that the Bucks are actually favored in this one. I haven't pulled it up quite yet, but I'm going to leave that for you because you should head over to Bet Online right now and check that out. That series might be the series of round two. You can check out all of your sports wagering information over at Bet Online. You can find all the trends and actions from live betting to the draft to esports and more all over at Bet Online. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, so we're going to close the show with a little bit of hockey. It's been a minute since we've talked about gopher hockey. We need to talk about the departures that we just had. The first is we lost Chaz Lucius, who signed with the Winnipeg Jets. He's going to be going to their, I believe, WHL team or AHL, one of the two. I believe he's going to the WHL team. He signed the three-year entry-level deal. This one hurts me personally a little, but I think it hurts us more as a team because even Coach Motzko said that Chaz Lucius is one of the most impressive offensive players he has coached. And we lost him this year due to injury. We lost him for the last four regular seasons and then all of the playoffs. He was on a, a good roll, especially for a freshman season. And coming in, stepping in for the guys that were playing in the Olympics, I was super excited for him. I think he was going to take the next step with our program. But unfortunately, he is making the choice to go pro. Now, I get it. School isn't for everyone. And also, he's coming off an injury. So maybe it was just best for him and his family to take that guaranteed money now. And rather than risking him losing any value in the future, and what he put on the ice in his limited time was impressive. So I get it. I can't even blame him. But that's what I hope the most is that it was more so because he wanted him and his family wanted the money. He wanted to take the next step to the pros and school wasn't for him. That's what I'm hoping because his brother, Cruz Lucius, is one of our most recent commits. So I hope it's not something that we need to dive deeper on, maybe a little bit more behind the scenes that could cause Cruz to potentially not want to come here anymore. That is what I hope does not happen. So we're going to have to stay tuned for that. We're going to have to keep our eyes peeled, ears to the ground. But we're hoping that's not the case. Now, the other departure that we had that was a little bit shocking to me, but it happened, is Tristan Braz entered the transfer portal. Now, Tristan was a draft prospect for the Penguins. He was a second-round pick. He had a hard time adjusting to the college hockey game. And this was mentioned by the Peng Penguins player development director. The director of player development for the Penguins even mentioned it's tough to come in against players that are up to six years older than you at that collegiate level when he's 18, 19 years old, plus being on a really good team that is returning a lot of really good players that did well the year before. You don't just come in and even when you were recruited hard and you were praised and you don't just come in and have a flawless transition. It, it, it doesn't happen. And for those that it does happen for, it's super special. It's rare. It doesn't happen all the time. And most young guys don't realize this. They don't understand that. And that's what the player director of player development was stressing. Now, Tristan was on the third line. He was left wing. He had two players playing in front of him. Often that played in front of him were now gone with McLaughlin and Crookshank. 
McLaughlin went pro and Crickshank transferred. So it was looking like Tristan should get some more time for our squad. So that's what kind of puzzles me a little bit with this transfer. Now, the only person that played in front of him at one of his two positions, whether that be left wing or center, is Nice. He's the only player returning that likely would have been ahead of, well, would have been ahead of him and played ahead of him last season. So I'm a little baffled by the transfer still. Clearly, he wants to be in more of the top six role as well as playing in more of the power play units, which wouldn't have been guaranteed here, Uh, especially with you have guys that are, we have at least two top level prospects coming in that are expected to be first round draft picks and Logan Cooley and Jimmy Snuggerud. Plus we have guys like Cruz Lucius, Ryan Chesley that are all coming in as well. So it wouldn't have been guaranteed. And then you have guys like Faber and whatnot coming back. So again, those specialty minutes, the power play unit, the top six, it wouldn't be guaranteed. He maybe wants to go somewhere that it is. It's taking the easy way out, if you ask me. But at the same time, you got to do what you got to do. So I don't blame him for it. I was a little bit shocked by it. But why it's all slightly worrying to me is because we need to keep an eye, again, on Cruz Lucius, Chaz's brother. Again, we're hoping that it isn't anything behind the scenes because the reason it could add up real quick is if Logan Cooley, who is projected to be potentially the second pick in the NHL draft, has mentioned on multiple occasions he would love to make the jump right away, which means he would skip the Gophers and would go pro immediately. And then if you lose Cruz Lucius on top of that because of some outside issues we didn't know about, and then you're losing Tristan and you just lost Chaz, that's a lot of top guys that we were fully expecting to be on this roster heading into the next season. So you'd be losing two freshmen plus two top recruits, and that could turn into a major hit for our promising roster. So that's why it's slightly concerning to me, but it does bring up the fact of, could it mean that Ryan Johnson and Sammy Walker are coming back? I believe, especially for Ryan Johnson, the fact that he hasn't signed with the Sabres yet, and I believe they only have one game left now. So he wouldn't get any of that extra time, and he would burn a year, essentially. That just doesn't make sense. So I think it's looking more likely that Ryan Johnson's back. Sammy Walker is still kind of a question mark, but maybe these moves mean that those guys might be coming back. Regardless, I think we're going to be okay in the long run. We still have key guys like Nyes, Faber, Lacombe. We have Close coming back at the goal. And then hopefully we have Brodzinski coming back too, which I believe we will. Then you got them on top of guys that could make the leap and take that step up, like Mason Nevers, Rhett Picklick, Aaron Huglin, who all showed some promise this past season, younger guys. And then you have a top recruiting class coming in that includes Cooley, Snuggerud, Lucius, Ryan Chesley, the Middle Stop brothers, and Connor Kurth. All of those guys show lots of promise and could be immediate contributors to the program. And that's not even including guys like Oliver Moore and Sam Renzel, who are already committed verbally in 2023. So we're still in good shape. Bob Motzko has been going crazy with the recruits and really stacking up the squad. I wouldn't worry too much in the long term, but let's just hope there's not too much going behind the scenes. The Gophers are super promising. I think we'll make a deep run again, even with a young squad next year. And I'm looking forward to it. So go Gophers, Sky Yuma. That's going to do it for us here at the Lockdown Golden Gophers podcast. Please, please, please check out the Twitter. Give us a follow. Figure out how to win this mini helmet. Again, that's dropping on Monday. We're announcing the winner. So you got the weekend to get your entries in. Otherwise, you're going to miss out. Now, this is Kane Rob signing off. Please, please subscribe down below and start dropping your questions. I'm building them up. We're going to get our mailbag all stuffed and packed and ready for the answers. That second topic we had today was a question from a fan, and I want more of those. You guys ask the best questions out there. You ask those hard-hitting questions, and that's why we talked about why the Big Ten West is getting so disrespected. 
Keep bringing your questions my way. Drop them down in the comments below. This is Kane Rob signing off. I will see you Monday. And hopefully we'll be talking about many of the Gophers who got drafted in the NFL 2022 draft.